Batman. 1943's back quote Batman is far and away the worst Batman movie I've ever seen. It might be the worst Batman anything in any medium period. The acting is poor, the writing is awful, the plot is repetitive, the action is uninspired, the runtime is an unbearable 260 minutes, and the racism on display is amongst the most shocking and repulsive in Hollywood history. The only people who should endure this disaster are pop culture historians and people who hate themselves so much they feel a deep and implacable need to torture themselves. Watching the backquote Batman serial is like self-flagellation for comics fans. Despite its revolting ethnic stereotyping and tedious story, the serial did make a fairly substantial impact on the Batman mythos. Most importantly, it introduced the Batcave, or, as it's called here, the Bats Cave where Batman, Lewis Wilson, and Robin, Douglas Croft, perform science experiments and occasionally interrogate captured saboteurs and thugs. Director Lambert Hillier and his team also get credit for devising the cool secret entrance for the bad cave hidden inside a grandfather's clock, a gimmick that became a staple of subsequent backquote Batman books. The actual cave itself is as bargain basement as they come literally a funny looking cave backdrop with an oddly ornate antique desk. Can you imagine how heavy that thing is? How did they even get it down the stairs into the cave? I bet Bruce made Alfred carry it. Speaking of Alfred, he's another element that the serial gets credit for. He existed in the comics prior to his depiction in the film, but in a different form. He looked chubbier and was clean shaven. The serial's Alfred, played by William Austin, was thin with a mustache, and before long the comic book Alfred received a Machiavel to match his cinematic counterpart. These are the first instances of comics borrowing from the movies they inspired, a trend that continues to this day. The backquote Batman serial also clearly inspired the 1960s backquote Batman television show, which took a number of its elements and recycled them as camp. The serials Batman and Robin constantly scale buildings with their bat ropes, even when they could clearly get where they are going faster, by taking the stairs or an elevator. The backquote Batman TV series simply amplified the absurdity, by having them walk slowly on obviously horizontal sets, while carrying on long conversations, or occasionally interacting with cameoing guest stars. The serial also features feverish cliffhangers and an overexcited narrator hyping the next dramatic installment of this theater next week. Both of those elements became trademarks of the Adam West Batman, which aired twice weekly for most of its run and concluded the first half of each two-parter with a cliffhanger and a narrator imploring viewers to return tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Columbia Pictures so backquote Batman's importance to its title character's evolution is substantial but so is its cultural insensitivity. Granted, the serial was produced in 1943, at the height of World War II. It was a different time. But the characterization of Dr. Dacca by J. Carol Nash, a Caucasian actor in squinting yellow face, and the constant anti-Asian slurs not to mention the casual justification of Japanese internment camps go well beyond simple bigotry. Curiously, numerous American characters comment on Dacca's strange voice. It's hard to tell whether that's an inside joke, because Nash sounds nothing like an actual Asian person, or an implication on the part of the serial that all Japanese people have strange voices. Given the general level of prejudice on display, I'm inclined to think it's the latter. The rest of the serial isn't much better. Where the two previous comic book movies in this column, backquote Adventures of Captain Marvel, and backquote Spy Smasher, both contained a nice variety of thrilling fights and chases, backquote Batman runs an abysmal 15 chapters and rarely strays from a single recurring formula. Batman and Robin race to a location. Dacca's goons beat them up. Batman gets knocked out, and then tossed over a ledge, or left to die under a heavy object or at the bottom of a booby-trapped pit, before he finds a last second escape, that is Robin comes and saves him. The brawls themselves are dull and interchangeable. There's none of the choreographic creativity or athleticism that director William Whitney and his stunt team brought to back quote Spy Smasher. Even worse, Batman loses almost every single fight. He gets knocked unconscious constantly. Isn't Batman supposed to be good at fighting? Isn't that the main thing that makes him Batman? The backquote Batman serials Cape Crusader is basically a giant punching bag in the highest wasted briefs ever worn by a human being. Look at those things. His utility belt practically touches his nipples. 
Columbia Pictures when back quote Batman isn't racist or boring, it's lazy, there are a ton of continuity errors, and baffling story turns. Batman will lose his cape in one shot, and in the next it's miraculously back. Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson talk about how they must protect their secret identities in order to remain effective agents of the government's war against Japan, but then the government sends Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson secret coded messages intended for Batman. I guess FDR knows Batman is really Bruce Wayne. Those coded messages set up one of the most surreal moments in the serial, when a close-up reveals Wayne Manor's address in Los Angeles, at 1918 Hill Road, to be exact, after the narrator has already made it explicitly clear that it is located high atop one of the hills which ring the teeming metropolis of Gotham City. Did the prop department forget to read the script? Lewis Wilson makes a terrible Batman, but he's a decent Bruce Wayne. His flaky playboy routine makes a convincing cover for his extracurricular activities as Batman. And William Austin has a couple nice moments of bumbling comic relief as Alfred. It's easy to see why the comics quickly adapted his interpretation of the character back to the page. But that's about all that's worth recommending in a 260 minute slog. I absolutely hated this film. But hey, if you enjoy virulent racism and mediocre stunts, you'll love backquote Batman. Read more, the complete history of comic book movies, chapter 3, backquote Batman vertical bar https, slash slash screen crush point com slash history of comic book movies Batman slash, utm underscore sourc equals tsm clip and utm underscore medium equals referral. We are the community of cinema enthusiasts. Subscribe and click on the bell to receive news.